Hey, this is Claire Lawrence. Hang around while I make this in honor of Game of Thrones. Gotta have some dragons. Hi everyone. I thought I'd get started on my first video and do a Game of Thrones inspiration piece. Well, the season premiere for the last season comes up this weekend, so, and you guys know I like dragons. So this is generally the theory. I've got a um, alcohol ink piece that I've done, and I was gonna do another piece, but I changed my mind last minute, as we like to do. Um, and I thought it would be more dramatic with this kind of a deal, or this kind of a position coming in. I've got this uh, drawn out uh, on the computer, and I've enlarged it up and spliced it together. That's another part of this video. And I'm going to transfer it to the alcohol ink piece. So basically, we're going to end up having wings that come off. The body's going to be here. It's going to wrap around that kind of, that's the impact. So he's coming in off of this. So it gives kind of a smoky kind of illusion, but I'm gonna take it one more step. I'm gonna do a quick coat over this whole thing with a little bit of uh, white paste mixed into it, a little bit of black paste mixed into some areas. So it gives even more of a smoky kind of impression. Then I'm gonna put the dragon on top of that and then do some more resin work on top of that. But the dragon, how I'm gonna work with that uh, as you've seen, I've done some basic outlines. I'm not worried about too much on following the exact detail of the Game of Thrones dragon. It's kind of like inspired by a uh, piece. So I'm just going to have some fun with it. But I remember this uh, piece I did for Shy, and I messed around with the outlines and a little bit of spot glitter and scales and stuff. So I'm kind of going to do that. And another thing I'm gonna try and do is, when I'm working with the dragon, I'm gonna use alcohol ink. So, to recap again, so we're starting with the alcohol ink base, put a quick coat on top of that, and then paint alcohol ink on top of that. Uh, and then resin as the final deal. So hopefully just two coats of resin. We'll, we'll see how that works. But the final bit of uh, resin, which is important, is going to be the stone coat art coat so that it has the UV protection. So that's the plan for right now. I'm um, gonna pause this for a moment so I can mix up my quick coat and pop back in and do this. As you know, quick coat, you gotta hustle. So I wanna make sure that I am prepared. So wish me luck. Okay, I mixed up my quick coat from stone coat and Placed it on the board. I've got some in cups. And now hustle time. The first thing I'm going to do is give this a good coating. And then I got to mix up the paste real quick. It's always a hurry up and white game. Plan out your colors ahead of time. Before you work with Quick Coat, you want to kind of have an idea of where you want to place them and that whole bit. Um, and that will help with the hustle. Let's see. I am going to do a second coat on here, so if there's any spots that are missed, I should be good. bubbles Over here, and on off 
camera a bit, but I'm gonna talk it through it. So I've got a little cup about not much resin in it, and I'm just barely hitting it with a white paste. So it's gonna give a transparent type of an effect, or at least that's the hope. So it looks smoky and not, you can still see some of the color from the background coming through. With this, doing the quick coat first allows me to do is still have the chance today to work on my piece. And I decided last minute to do a little bit of glitter, just barely touch it in the background. And I'm using that stone coat diamond dust metallic, which is like fairy sparkle, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's got to be a record as far as mixing. Okay. And it still comes up opaque. I put more clear in the area and more clear in the paste to see if I can water it down just a hair. And I'm not even mixing it up that thoroughly. So we will see how this goes. Let's see. I'm going to do white down here. And again, the black is a little bit on the opaque side. I mixed more than enough resin. Um, there's a great I, I have to admit that I do this as a go-to. There's a calculator for um, resin on pieces that you can go to with um, artresin.com. And it helps really quickly to determine how much resin you need. So I hit that up. Okay, let me get back onto this real quick. I'm going to kind of loosely smooth this out with my hands. And that will allow me to disperse the color a little bit and go maybe in swoop sediment. Yep, I kind of like that. Okay, we're gonna leave that. Oh, heck with this. I don't normally swap off gloves that fast, but in this case I need to hustle. All right, a little bit of glitter in here just to have well, you've got to have glitter, right? I always think of dragons as being those mystical creatures. So that kind of helps with that. All right. That's enough of that. Now we're going to move this stuff around a little bit. Trying to get rid of any harsh lines that the glitter might have left behind when you're pouring the glitter on top. Just to soften it up a bit. And to go a little bit of blending with the white and the black. I'm not too worried about it, just, just a little bit. time with the air just to get rid of any potential bubbles. Let that go off the edge. Alright, I think that's a good start. So it's already got a little bit of dimension. <laughs> I got even got cells. So we're just talking about while this is sitting here. So this is the product, Stone Coat Quick Coat. 
Uh, usually sets up approximately two hours. Depends on how thick it is. If it's thick in the cup like that, it'll set up pretty fast. Um, and then the colors that I use, I've used the uh, La Res pigment paste. I've got just black and white on that, and that works out really well. And uh, Diamond Dust, which is some amazing like fairy dust, if you want to call it. Open it up carefully. Don't breathe. You'll see the stuff go into the air really quickly. So be careful with this stuff. But it is amazing. Okay, let this cure and I'll get on to my drawing and get that prepared to transfer. Okay, I've done the trimming of my drawing, or I should say printouts, uh, with the time lapse because it's not that exciting. But I will talk you through the basic principle. I use Photoshop on my computer, or I use Procreate on my iPad uh, and with a, a tablet and a pen, a stylus. The printer, when I print it out, I print it out in tiling. I don't know if tiling is a universal uh, print. Uh, option or not check out with it in your particular program use this um, like if you're printing out names or drawings or even a picture of somebody you love and you want to do a tracing of or you've done a tracing on the computer so the same principle works so here's my initial drawing here and it tiles out in sections going across so I've got three panels here three panels here first thing I do is I label them a1 a2 a and a3 B one, two, and three. That allows me later on when I start getting the fine cutting and stuff, I don't get lost. This is a simple piece, so it's not so bad, but I've had some, some as many as 30 pieces of, you know, papers that I had to cut. And you can get lost pretty good. Go ahead, keep your blanks in there. It's important when you, obviously when you see the whole thing lined up, it gives the overall image. Um, it'll help you quite a bit. So this particular program has little tick marks that they use. And if you see how this is spaced out, this particular program has an overlap function. You can tell it to overlap this much, this much, or this much, or even none. I always overlap at least an inch. So that way I can find my better lines because I don't want to cut on the, this line here. I'd rather cut to the side so that way I can have the whole line in one uh, panel. It'll make it for easier when you're transferring. Uh, the other part is too, is cut on one side, like this particular piece, this piece, and this piece. I always cut on this side, so that way you have a little bit of overlap and you have a little bit of movement when you start putting the tapes together. And you probably saw me make sure that I had this area and this area lined up. And as soon as I had that lined up, I tweaked where these line up. This is important, this is very important. So this helps me get it in the right position. This tweaks it out just a hair. And once I have that done, I usually will tape on some area that's critical and then do an overall tape so the whole thing is secure, et cetera, et cetera, go down the line. When all my rows are taped together, then the same thing happens on the row sections. I always, in this case, tape the bottom, or cut the bottom, cut the bottom cut the bottom, you get into a system, makes it easier for putting it together. So when I'm done with this, I will go and lay it. For example, if I had a drawing, did, the, did this drawing over, I would cut it exactly 12 by 12, put some pieces of tape over it, lift it up, put transfer paper underneath it, like it's a kind of a carbon paper, lay it down, use a pencil or a ballpoint pen to draw over your lines and that does enough of a transfer. What I don't know in this particular case because I'm doing something new here is I've already got a coat of quick coat there. So it's shiny, it's gonna be hard. I don't know how the carbon's gonna transfer. If it doesn't, well, I'll have to come up with a plan B and let's see what happens. So hopefully that helps you.
wanted to fill you in on what I've been doing. Obviously, you saw me painting it with the uh, time lapse. What you didn't see is uh, the transfer was a success. The uh, carbon paper works really well. And on top of the carbon paper lines, I added a resist line, which is kind of like a liquid latex or a liquid rubber. And it creates a dam so that you can paint within those confined areas and it wouldn't interfere or blend into this background, which I didn't want it to do. After the alcohol ink was dry, I went and removed it, which creates basically, it's kind of like a white, but basically you see the background in case the, the blue resin work and alcohol ink background. So after that was done, uh, I applied just a little bit of glitter resin with a quick coat from Stone Coat. And the glitter is from La Res, and it has a little bit of a, kind of a sun glow to it hence the word name sun catcher. But there's a little bit of gold tones and I thought the gold tones would work really well here. So the next step is a flood coat. Let me try that again. Flood coat, there we go. And I'm gonna mess around with a little bit more of the white and the black to give it some more of that wartime type of, or battle kind of scene. Here's the finished piece. Get you in for a detail. What's interesting is the white and the black move across the body, like he's actually busting through this kind of the storm. Especially around the legs. With adding that little bit of glitter, it gave it a little bit of a bump or a shape to move around, which is kind of a neat effect. Gives it a little bit of three dimension. So I'm happy.